Dr. Robert Citrenberg is an infectious disease expert from Advocate Aurora Health, joins us live this morning. Good morning. Good morning. We appreciate you joining us. So why don't you start by telling us how hospitals are doing with COVID patients in your area? Oh, well, we've seen a, a big surge in the number of cases in our hospitals as have other healthcare systems. Our inpatient census for COVID has is, is about tripled over the last few weeks. We're now between Illinois and Wisconsin caring for over 900 patients in our hospitals with COVID. It's a huge spike from what it was just a month or so ago. Are you seeing any difference in who's coming in with COVID symptoms? Is it the unvaxxed, the vaxxed? We're hearing that the majority are unvaccinated. What are you seeing? We pulled some data from Advocate Aurora within the last couple of weeks, which really shows some striking findings. So 74% of our inpatients with COVID were completely unvaccinated. Another 18% were partially vaccinated or not boosted. And then only 8% were fully vaccinated and boosted, and, and a lot of those were immunocompromised people. So for people who are not immunocompromised, who have been fully vaccinated and boosted, your chances of being hospitalized from this disease are really, really low. And doctor, how is your staff doing? Do you feel like your hospitals have the resources they need at this point? Um, it's, it's tricky. Right now, we're, we're really pushed to the limit. We're trying to be creative in the way we uh, deploy our staff. As you know, uh, cr there's critical shortages of, of health care workers all around the country, and our health care system is not an exception to that. So we're really trying to redeploy uh, people for the next few weeks to get through this surge, and hopefully it will be, it'll be easier after that. We're hearing reports that Omicron has peaked in South Africa where this uh, Omicron variant was first detected. Are you guys looking at that information and saying, hey, hopefully this means that, uh, you know, things will start to die down in several weeks here? Or what are you doing with that information? Yes, we're looking at it very, very closely, and it's used to create mathematical models to predict when the caseload is going to peak. And you know, in general, it's not a hard and fast rule, but you know, the faster it goes up, the faster it comes down. And you can see that curve in South Africa. It's a very dramatic a curve how fast it went up and now how fast it started to come down. We're hopeful the same thing will happen here. We haven't peaked yet in this country, but we're hopeful maybe after the next couple of weeks or so, we'll see that same peak that was seen in South Africa and then see a rapid drop off in the numbers of cases. I'd like to get your opinion on these pills that have uh, recently been approved, uh, one from Pfizer and from Merck. Are you optimistic that those pills could help uh, perhaps turn the tide here with the pandemic? Well, the Pfizer pill more so than the Merck. The Merck pill didn't look as good in the clinical trials. Uh, the Pfizer pill looked really good. It prevented hospitalization and death in about 89% of people who took it. So uh, for people, even people who have been unwilling to get vaccinated, if they get sick, they may be willing to take the, the Pfizer pill. Uh, so uh, I, I think it's, it's very uh, hopeful for us. Uh, the question is the supply, how fast we can get enough drug out to people around the country who need it, because right now, we're right at this moment, we're in the middle of this surge, uh, and uh, we're hopeful that we can get the drug out while it's still gonna be helpful for us. So with this surge, I think people are having a really hard time getting tests at this point, not only at the stores, but long lines to get tested. I guess my question to you is, why do you think that, you know, two years into this, we're still having trouble getting tested? And what do you think, what's your advice to people looking for a test, what should they do? <laughs> You know, it's really uh, bewildering why it's so hard to get a test. And I was just out looking around downtown yesterday and a lot of these uh, storefronts where they have walk-in testing, the lines are all the way down the block. All the retail pharmacies are sold out of tests. Uh, I guess the, the best thing to do is to be diligent. I know the government's promised to ship at-home tests free of charge, but I don't know when that's going to happen. So try to be diligent best as possible uh, to get uh, at one of those testing centers to call around the pharmacies to see if they have tests available. Other than that, maybe the most important thing is if you have symptoms and you're concerned that you have COVID, but you can't get a test, please stay home, stay away from people until you can get a test. I know you're aware that many universities are gonna be going to remote learning for a couple of weeks after the holiday break is over. I know parents are very concerned that their kids uh, in grade school, high school, uh, might have to return to remote learning. Do you think that that school should take that step? I, th I think that's going to be an individual decision in, in different school districts uh, based on the prevalence in their community. Right now, it looks like that might be a useful thing to do, but in a month, the landscape might be completely different. We might have passed this peak and the surge is coming down. So 
I think there should be contingency plans for, for both remote learning and in-person learning, and then take an opportunity when it gets close to when school is open to then uh, make that decision. And you can always pivot back one way or the other, but to have both uh, available as contingencies. And we see the city of Chicago with the uh, really a vaccine passport situation right now. Show your vaccine to get into some areas. Do you think more places around the state should be doing that as a doctor? What do you think? I, I think they should have been doing it months ago. They've been doing it in New York City for many months now. Uh, and it's a way to, number one, keep the, the public places a little safer because we have fewer unvaccinated people. I know they'll say, well, if you're vaccinated, you can still get COVID and that's true, but you're, the probability is much higher if you're unvaccinated. Uh, creates safer public spaces. And also it does serve as an incentive, I think, to people who are maybe on the fence about getting vaccinated to then go ahead and get vaccinated, knowing that they, they require proof of vaccination to enter public places. Dr. Robert Sittenberg, we really appreciate your time this morning. Wishing you a happy holiday season. Thank you, too. Thank you very much.